Hello everyone and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. I hope you're all doing well at the moment uh, in your lockdown. And uh, this is just a set of short talks, discussions about topics uh, to do with life in the universe that I think are interesting and I hope you do as well. Um, today, rather than talking about a particular topic in the origin of life, I want to talk about this question, what is all this astrobiology stuff anyway? And sometimes you may have heard me say, instead of life in the universe, I may have spoken about astrobiology. And the question is, what is this word astrobiology? If you go onto the media, or if you go on to look at news stories online, you'll often see astrobiology associated with the hunt for alien life. You'll see the media stories saying things like, astrobiologists uh, predict that we'll find life on Mars in this time period, or astrobiologists have discovered a new method for hunting for life on other planets. Um, it's not inaccurate. One of the most fascinating questions to do with life in the universe is this profound question, is there life elsewhere? Are we alone in the universe? So astrobiology as the subject that looks at life in the universe certainly has at its core this question, is there life elsewhere? But it's not the only aspect of astrobiology. Uh, astrobiologists are also interested in the origin of life on Earth. How did life get started? How has life evolved on the Earth for over three and a half billion years? And even what is the future of life, both on our planet, but also for, for humanity? Will we explore the Moon and Mars? Will we establish permanent uh, settlements on those planetary bodies? Astrobiology is concerned with the human future beyond the Earth as well. It's worth thinking about the history of this term. Historical terms are not always that interesting, but the history uh, gives you some insight into where astrobiology came from. It's not a new term. In 1953, a very interesting scientist called Gavriel Tikhov founded an astrobotany sector of the Kazakhstan Academy of Sciences. And in his spare time, he wrote a book that he published in Moscow in 1953 called Astrobiology. And Gavriel Tikhov spent his time looking at the light reflected by plants using methods like spectroscopy to see if he could detect signatures of light that would tell him about, um, about life and, and the character of that life. And he thought that spectroscopy could be used to hunt for vegetation on Mars, which is why today we might think that he's a little bit eccentric. But in fact, he was a little bit of a pioneer because today, um, even uh, now, people propose that we could use the pigments of plants or, or similar types of of organisms to look for life on exoplanets, planets orbiting distant stars, and that spectroscopy could be used to look for these signatures of life on the surface of other planets. So Tikhov was not so wide of the mark, but he was one of the first people to use astrobiology as a title of a book, and that very much was about the hunt for alien life. So it's understandable that one might think that astrobiology is just about that. Then in, the in 1960, uh, Joshua Lederberg, who was an American scientist who incidentally won the Nobel Prize for showing that bacteria could exchange genetic material. So when two bacteria get together, um, some of them are able to exchange genetic material. And that is the basis of very important phenomena like the uh, transmission of antibiotic resistance in hospitals. Uh, Joshua Lederberg was not just a microbiologist. He also thought about life beyond the Earth. And he coined this term exobiology in 1960 when he published a paper in Science. And in, in, in America, um, exobiology became the term for the hunt for alien life. Then uh, later on in the 1990s, people began to realize that quite apart from alien life, there was a much greater interest in this whole phenomenon of life in the universe and also the history of life on Earth. People began to discover um, exoplanets orbiting distant stars, uh, experiments to study uh, the origin of life, the chemical origin of life, advance, and people started to uh, improve our understanding of the fossil evidence for life on the early Earth. And all of these things came together in a broad interest in life in the universe. And in the 1990s, NASA, recognizing this growing interest, founded the NASA Astrobiology Institute where astrobiology was now covering the full panoply of subjects to do with life in the universe, not just this question, is there life on other planets, although that continues to be uh, one of the more fascinating and profound questions in that collection of, of, of wider questions. 
at once. Uh, NASA had founded an Astrobiology Institute. Uh, the subject grew in interest from the 1990s up to the present day. And now astrobiology is sort of everywhere. Uh, lots of universities around the world have astrobiology groups or even centers. Um, there is a, a, an Australian Centre for Astrobiology, a Spanish Centre for Astrobiology. Here in the UK, we set up a sort of small virtual UK Centre for Astrobiology. Uh, but in fact, since those early days when these national centres existed, there are now astrobiology groups um, everywhere. Uh, in, the, in the UK, there's always been uh, and continues to be a very strong astrobiology presence at the Open University. Uh, there's astrobiology at Newcastle University, uh, the Univ at Manchester University, at Imperial, UCL, uh, Birkbeck, and the list goes on. There's lots of people doing astrobiology or with an interest. And of course, because it's very broad, uh, it encompasses people from astronomy, from uh, geology, from biology, and some of these people are doing geology and biology and astronomy, but don't necessarily call themselves astrobiologists, but engage in this wider field uh, that has a large number of people involved in it. It's interesting to think about, you know, is, sometimes I get asked, is astrobiology a science? Um, first of all, some people say, well, you haven't found any alien life yet, so surely astrobiology can't be a science. But as I've just explained, astrobiology is not just about alien life. But there's a much more important um, fundamental principle to realize is that scientific disciplines are completely artificial. They were constructed by human beings. For example, when I home in on an atom, I don't find a little label around it that says this material must only be studied by a physicist. If I pick up an aardvark and turn it over, I don't find on its belly a little label that says this material must only be studied by a biologist. Um, nature is utterly indifferent to human pride, vanity, administrative boundaries, and anything else we might have cooked up as a product of human society. Scientific disciplines actually do not exist in the natural world. There is just a universe about which we can ask questions using the scientific method, and that is all there is to say on the matter. So the question of astrobiology, is it a science? Uh, it's a very uninteresting uh, and not very profound question. The fact is that if astrobiology does nothing more and bring a few people together to think about uh, scientific questions of interest, to write scientific papers, uh, to come up with new questions, then its purpose in the world is as justified as any other traditional field of science, from chemistry to biology, physics, neurobiology, anything else you want to dream up uh, that has existed. So astrobiology is really just about getting people together um, that think about these wider questions of life in its cosmic context. Uh, and if that's its only purpose, then its purpose is justified. It's a tremendously exciting field. Um, not only does it answer scientific questions, but much of what it does also strays into philosophical and social questions. For example, if we were to contaminate another planet that had life, that's a speculative scenario, but it's an interesting scenario to consider because if we were to contaminate another planet, would that be ethically um, unacceptable? What is the future of humans in the universe? Should we be going into space when we have problems here to solve on Earth? Or should we solve all of our Earth-based problems before going into space? These questions are not scientific, but they very strongly interface um, with the question of life in the universe, and particularly the, the question of the future of human life um, in the universe. So that is astrobiology, the study of life in the universe, the study of the origin, evolution, distribution and future of life in the universe, as it's sometimes been described. Um, it's a very thrilling area of science, just because in the years ahead, uh, we will continue missions to search for life on Mars, uh, to study the possibility of life on icy moons, and to look for life on exoplanets. We will continue experiments to study the chemical origin of life on Earth, uh, to understand the evolution of life, how uh, life has co-evolved with planet Earth, uh, over the years, such as the, the great rise in oxygen two and a half billion years ago, very much part of the history of our planet. Astrobiology covers all of these links between um, different sciences to address the question of how did we get here? Uh, what is the origin of life on our planet? Could there be life elsewhere? And what is the future of this, this fascinating phenomenon of uh, replicating evolving material that we call life? So thanks a lot again for joining me uh, in this talk series. I hope you're all doing well. Look after yourselves in the continuing lockdown. And uh, thanks for taking part in these talks. Bye.